my lovely friends welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time here hi my name is Melissa or Missa welcome today I'm gonna to be doing I just want to see this more for myself to be honest I'm gonna be doing half of my face how I used to do my makeup like a year ago and half how I've been doing it a lot more recently also not naked I do have my dressing kind of just wrapped around me because I'm warm I've already done my brows because to be honest brows are really boring to watch this is how I used to do my brows just very like penciled in brows chiseled with concealer and then this is how I've been doing it more recently which is soap brows using the pink honey soap brow stuff and um, it's amazing and that that brow will not move so that's all I've done apart from a little bit of moisturizer and we're gonna begin I'm so excited because I feel like there's gonna be quite a big difference so yeah let's let's jump in in terms of primer, probably my most used one from about a year ago is my e.l.f. Luminous Pipe Primer. It's probably not a year old, to be honest, but this is the only primer I can think of that I actually used to use fairly regularly. I still use it sometimes, I really like it. And they have a matte version, they have a normal version. This is the Luminous one and it is really nice. I really like it. It was Elena from Elena Glam. I shall link her um, channel. She put me onto this and it is really pleasant, I must say. And then on the other side, what I always do now is put on a really luminous primer, like my Becca Backlight Priming Filler. I use that all the time. It's pretty much empty. My Smashbox the luminous one but I really want to try this again today this is the revolution super dewy skin elixir makeup serum I used this in my full face first impressions which would be my last video and I was just blown away by how glossy my skin looked so I just want to try this again this is only like my second time using it so this is technically a little bit cheaty but I just really want to see if I'm gonna like this underneath my regular foundation because it feels glorious and it looks glorious. So that's that side, that's how glossy and dewy it looks and then that is the elf side. There's definitely a difference. I'm gonna do my foundation on this side first just because it's gonna be lower coverage and I didn't prepare two sponges. My NARS Longwear natural radiant longwear foundation. This is in Mont Blanc. I feel like it's pretty much the perfect shade for me And I'm just gonna take like one and a half pumps I'm doing my whole well that would be for my whole face. So maybe I've used a little bit much, but we'll see I Definitely go for right now a much more luminous base more dewy more cream products and also just less coverage like I don't pack on the coverage anymore like I used to especially on my forehead I'd actually try and put as little as possible on my forehead just because I've got wrinkles and makeup up there really sinks in I just love this foundation obviously it's expensive it's a bit of an investment but for me it's totally worth it I do prefer it over the ABH only because it's got a little bit more coverage but I'll happily use the ABH instead of this on any given day. I was looking back, oh, why am I starting my foundation? This was a really stupid idea because I'm gonna be doing a bold eye. Oh, okay, well, we're just gonna have to roll with it. I am not wiping this off. So that's real luminous, that looks great over that primer. It just looks the same, but super lovely. <laughs> so that's my like luminous NARS side, which I love. And on my other side, I really don't feel like I could pick another foundation apart from my Maybelline Superstay. But do I have a shade that will match me? No. Well, I'll use five light beige. This is the one I used to use the most. I feel like it's probably a little pale. And we're going to take like three pumps because I was all about coverage. And don't get me wrong, when we get back to summertime and it's a little bit hotter and stuff, I'm going to be full coverage matte again it's just how I like your makeup changes with the seasons I do feel like my tastes are getting a little bit less full coverage cakey and a little bit more somewhat natural I mean I'm never gonna be natural 
because it's just not my style but yeah you know what i mean tastes change should i have done a line down the center of my face probably this is so different this is matte this is full coverage i still love this foundation if i didn't it wouldn't be in my collection you can see just on the lips like the level of coverage that this maybelline gives you i still swear by it if you've got like really oily skin and you want coverage like this is where it's at wow that is like quite a difference like both crease under my eyes just ignore that i've got very creasy under eyes i've got lines under my eyes so it just happens but like the difference in coverage is just bananas but to be honest i feel more confident these days with this level of coverage than this level of coverage like i love this if i was going to like an all-night rave or something i would wear this foundation but day to day even just like trying to look you know nice I definitely go for this side. Cream contour is something, like cream products in general, something I do way more now than I used to. I definitely used to cream contour, like I always have done, but now I do it every single day. Whereas back then, I didn't really. So I'm gonna do cream products on this side and not this side because I never used to use cream products. They used to terrify me. I'm actually, I'm gonna use my Jeffree Star concealer in C19. Obviously I don't buy or support him anymore, but this is actually a really good cream contour shade on me and I've already bought it. The money is already in his pocket, so there's no point in me wasting it. Um, and I go up by my temple, round the forehead. I do tend to do my nose now just because I've gotten better at it. Definitely under here. And because this colour is so good, I can put a little bit on my jaw. Depends what day it is, what mood I'm in. I'll just blend this out. Yeah, the C19 shade is just, it's perfect. I just had it at the back of my door, so I kind of forgot I had it. And then I was looking through my cream contours and I was like, oh gosh, to dig that out and use it. And I'm using quite a lot, but it's because I do feel like cream contour gets covered up. So I don't mind putting on a little bit more than I think is probably necessary. Down the side of the schnoz right into the hairline that's another reason i love cream contours you can push it right in your hair and then you don't have that like white skin or like bronzed contour skin then your white scalp let's take it a little bit on the side of my eye so now that i've got my cream contour on, i'm gonna put my concealer on and what concealer would i have used probably I have so many. I'll pick my Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. This is in C3. We'll use it on this side. And I'm going to put a bunch down there, down my nose, up here, here, here. A lot of concealer. And on this side, I've really been reaching for my Benefit. What's this called? Cakeless Concealer. This is great. And I do tend to put a little bit less on. This is shade one. Kind of how Robert Welsh says to do it. Look at me, I do listen. Tiny bit here. I still put on quite a lot of concealer because I always feel like, like what concealer, what foundation doesn't do for you, concealer will. So I guess I'll just kind of blend these together on this side. I always put it there because I feel like I've got a really like weird red moustache line I can never get rid of <laughs> and then go right into this inner corner and then up onto my eye and then I'll like go over my cream contour and blend it right into my skin on this side I don't really know what concealer I used to absolutely adore probably should have gone back and had a look at that. For cream bronze, it's got to be Fenty Butter Biscuit. It's wonderful. I love, I love this cream bronzer. The Primark one is utterly fantastic, but it's just a little bit too dark for me. So I tend to use this Fenty one more. It's very subtle. I could definitely get a shade up in this Fenty, but to be honest, I don't need to. Maybe if 
probably zoom in a wee bit just so you can show you a bit closer. And I tend to put it on my nose, a bit on my jaw. It just blends into nothing in the best way possible. Like, <laughs> this side is just looking more luminous, more put together but still like natural. This is Melissa Natural, remember it's not natural natural. Whereas this side is just like a blank slate of like no dimension, you know what I mean? Whereas this side it's got angles and it's got contours and it's got the right stuff going on. I'm also gonna throw on cream blush and cream highlight so let me find. I use my Maybelline Apricot cream blush because I adore it very very much. I think I might do a blue look on my eyes so a peachy blush is gonna be ideal. I'm just tap a wee bit on here. This is the wrong brush but it's fine. This is such a stunning shade by the way. I adore it. Tap that on nicely, nicely. Happy with that. This side just looks so much better already. And cream highlight. I'm going to use my Morphe one just because it is the one I reach for more. Like the new collection one I got, I do really like. But this one I've been reaching for a lot more. So I'm going to like literally get it in the side of my eye there and then tap it down. This is in shade effect number one. It's very pretty, it's just a little expensive, that's why I got a collection one. So I would have like a cheaper option. And just putting this exactly where I'm gonna powder highlight because I do still powder highlight obviously. I love when it goes into the side of your eye. Something that Robert Welsh does and it really looks great like in natural light. So that's all my cream products really. What I'm going to do now is powder this side of my face. I'm going to use my Coty Airspun. This is almost finished. I'm so proud of myself. Um, and I'm going to bake to the high heavens. I will probably miss out my top lid. I'll just bake the rest of my face just because it would like eyeshadow to stick. <laughs> And usually I would do my eyes first, but I'm an idiot. So I'm gonna bake under here. I wouldn't say excessive amounts, because it always felt to me quite wasteful to like pack, 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 pack on powder under your nose, under your eyes. But a good fair amount, more than Robert Welsh would like. I always got my nose here. It's my lines. I don't know, I saw a YouTuber do that once and it made me do it. And then with the powder brush, powder the rest of this side of my face. I have eyelash glue there. I would literally go as matte as possible and then just add shine with my highlighter. Give it a feel, yeah. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? And then I'll grab my Skin Finish in Opalescent. I've been using this for a very long time. And I'm going to pop this. Like, is it all over? This is how I would add shine back into my skin. When I mattified very heavily. I just feel like I don't really need this product so much now because of how I do my makeup now but i still do use it i just kind of do it where i highlight because it is a powder and i don't want to pack a lot of powder on that side of my face and then what i'll do is grab a brush like an eyeshadow brush and i'll just use this coaty powder just because i've got it out and i do still like it and i'll powder my under eye just to stop my creases looking so bad. So both my eyelids are still moist. Okay, let's go on to like really chiseling this side and making it look fantabulous. I grab what's been a favorite for a very long time, my Coco Contour, because this will work great on both sides of my face, like for the more natural look and the heavy look. I'm gonna grab this medium one, medium contour. We are going to chisel. 
not by the way trying to make this side look bad so that this side looks good i'm trying to do this so i love it um, and i would push this right into my hair all around the perimeter and i would use this lighter side a little bit under here not much because i've never been a huge fan of jaw contour on me i feel like when i had like more of a double chin like it just it was so obvious and it just didn't look good and then i'll take a little brush and put the medium side under here makes your lip look bigger and then i'll mix white and then this matte one for my nose mm -mm -mm. and then i'll just i'm just gonna rub this brush on my pajamas i'll grab a little bit of light contour and just pop the tiniest bit down here and at the side of my eye there a little bit in my hairline i'm talking like the tiniest bit like that was barely anything really especially for me um but this side still looks probably more chiseled and contoured because of all the prep i put into the base and for bronzer let me find one I definitely used to use more Milani baked bronzer. This has always been a favorite. I love it. This is in shade 04. It's got a slight sheen to it. It's very nice. I know I put quite a lot of bronzer on. I haven't really changed how I bronze, except I maybe use a paler shade now. And maybe slightly less of it. And it would just kind of be here on the cheek and that would be it and a little on the forehead but i wouldn't like try and blend it out anywhere else what i much prefer now is my bh belgian waffle i think this is back in stock on beauty bay i think and i'm gonna take buttermilk which is the lightest one it's perfection another one is hula light this is just a lot cheaper and I'm just going to tap because my base is really not set. Pretty much everywhere I bronze on the other side. But maybe just a little bit less in one place. A little bit on the side of my nose, on my chin. This light shade is so perfect for me. I love this palette with my whole heart. It's still Stevie, think of you every time I use it because Stevie, one of my sausages, bought this for me and <laughs> I'm so glad because now I know the wonders of this palette. That's how we're looking on that side. That's how we're looking. Oh, that just does not look as good, does it? And I swear I am trying to look good. I'm not trying to make this side look bad. Don't feel like my highlight tastes have changed too much except I just use a little bit less. And my go-to is always Mary Lou by the Bam on this side. So I'll just grab my brush. It's just such a solid, good highlighter. And I'm going to put this exactly where I put my cream. It's right in the side of my eye there. And it's a little... I try not to put on too much. So I feel like it just does not in any way look natural when I'm walking around with absolutely heaps of highlight on on the days when i'm trying to look more natural i look glowy i look healthy and luminous and then on this side we should put on an ofra because it's the most blinding they're gorgeous this is star island i mean this is something else and i would never put it into the side of my eye i would just pop it all the way down here I pop it up here which is something I really don't do now because it just highlights my forehead lines but this is what I would always do on the chin I would put a lot on tip of the nose in between the brows I'm still trying to get it like only on half and let's be honest if you want an absolutely insane highlight you're gonna go Ofra aren't you and I still wear these like Ofra ones on my more natural days it's just 
holy smokes you need to put on so much less i still just prefer this side so much i just feel like everything looks better but then this is like melissa's going to a party melissa's going to see a man <laughs> in terms of setting spray i feel like i've always really enjoyed a dewy setting spray because Back then, I was so mad I wanted to add dewiness and now I want to keep the dewiness going and I feel like my L'Oreal Shake and Glow is just a really good example. So I'll do this side and I'm just going to put more on than I would now. I literally adore this setting spray and it smells so good. And then on, good. And then on this side, just a little bit less. To be honest, I still love setting spray a lot. And I would fan this side. Thank you, Kerry. See, this side still feels really wet and this side does not. But this side, look how glowy that is now. See, you can always add glow, even if you go for a matte look. Like you can just, you can add it on top, you know? I almost forgot the blush. Here we go, here's one I used to adore and love and still do, NARS Adoration. I remember when I got this in TK Maxx biggest bargain of my life very pink and i would mix the two on a brush and blush up i just rarely use pink blush anymore this setting spray is still not set in so it's uh grabbing on for a really itchy eyeball oh there we go super pink and pretty i still like pink blush i just don't reach for it now and then on this side, we'll use my Barry M blush palette. This is great. I always mix these two shades here. Tap that on. I love a yellowy orange blush. Peachy. And then a product that I don't think I've really used very much on my channel, but I use this almost every day. This is my Ofra blush and this is in the shade peach they sent this to me a really long time ago and i never ever used it and then i started using it a few months ago and i was blown away because it's so glossy like it's a powder but it's got a lot of shine to it so it just adds it just like melts in the blush to the highlight and just looks so beautiful it's probably one of the most beautiful offer products i own why can i not keep my workspace tidy this eye is so itchy i don't think i will do full freckles on this side because that isn't something i do every day that's just if i'm like really in the mood for it um let me zoom you in this is the more natural side i mean it's not natural i'm going to keep saying it it's not natural but it is more natural for me and then this is the the not so natural side I just feel like this side looks like I've got more of a lift because my brow's been putting up higher. I've got the contour here, here, whereas this side it's just a little bit more flat and not as like raised. That's me raising my left eyebrow and then that's me not. Like this side looks like I have so much more eye space than this side, right? That's the power of your brows being brushed up. Phenomenal. I need to work out what to do with my eyes. I'm thinking pink because I've always enjoyed a pink eye. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of Rebel on Candid Concealer just on both eyes. But I think I'll do one eye at a time, to be honest. Um, I looked back at a video from exactly a year ago. Well, it was the 2nd of October. I don't think I uploaded one this day exactly a year ago. And I used my Rebel on Candid and I still use it now. So, I love this as a as an eyeshadow base and I thought I would use my Carnival XL Pro just for both sides because I still love it and use it and it's the best thing ever. I think I'll do some kind of um, cut crease rounded pink and then on this side we'll just do something like I do now but I definitely used to do pink purple like cut creases all the time with like glitter on the lid so that's what we'll do. And we're gonna pray for as little fallout as possible. I'll probably not like talk through this too much because doing an eye look takes me hours. 
This is the shade Reckless, which is a dark purple. I'm just so worried about fallout. How do people do dramatic looks once their base is on? What is the sorcery? I used to only ever do rounded looks. I remember, like, I used to try and try and try and do smoky looks and it just did not work for me. I just couldn't work out how to do it and so I never practiced it and so I never got good at it. And now I feel like smoky looks are way more my style, but this is how I would always do it back in the day when I first started. Here we go. Nice rounded shape. This is really annoying because I washed all my brushes and now I'm going to make them all dirty. I'll take a bit of persuasion, blend this out. I've always loved bright, bold eyeshadow. Like, always. I just think the world is so grey and sad sometimes. A nice colourful eye just brings joy. And then I'll use a bit of Funky, which I can tell is one of my most used shades ever because I hit pan on it in the previous palette and this one. I kind of miss my Carnival one. I wish I hadn't gotten rid of it. I quite like to have all three side by side. Happy little sisters playing in my drawer. But I would never use it for the shadows, so there's no point. And you know me, I'm gonna have to deepen this up with black. If this falls out, I'm gonna cry. I could put a layer of powder down to stop it, but I never like what that does to my makeup underneath, so. This is gonna be such an old school Melissa look, I can already tell. I'll just blend this out with those three previous shades, and then we'll throw on a cut crease. So my cut crease was always very big, very high, very bold. Sometimes I still do it that way, but not so much now. I'll use my ABH eye primer. I'm literally in a yoga pose here trying <laughs> to do this. So well above my actual natural crease because if you're going to do a cut crease, it should be seen. Fill this in with more primer. I'm kind of panicking because I feel like I need to use some kind of loose product like I would have done, but the fallout will be terrible. And I would always do like a very straight cut crease. Okay. Doesn't look too bad actually, does it? What will we fill it in with? Ooh. I feel like we should fill this in with a pigment because that's what I used to do an awful lot and I would use Sample B a year. I love this. It's so pretty. Wait till you see it. But should I put on a little bit of glitter glue? <clears throat> Probably. Can we smidge of glitter glue? This is my collection one. I do have my little fan brush here. I'm hoping this will catch fallout. We'll see. And I'm gonna pat, you see what I mean? Outrageous how beautiful this is. I still swear by my sample beauty pigments. Like, they are the absolute best. That does make me happy. That does. Fallout, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, and then I guess I'll just blend into it, won't I? Um, I'm tempted to use a little bit of blue. Yeah, I might use a little bit of soft spot. Just because it is like a greeny blue reflect. But I'm gonna be careful to keep it very straight up and down. Now I tend to sweep it, like make it more diagonal, but this is how I used to do it. Anyway, a bit blue and then I'll just use a wee bit of purples and pinks. Blend into it. 
Okay, and then I would definitely always go around the edges when I with distortion from Urban Decay. This does feel very faithful to how I used to do my makeup, I have to say. Which is obviously the point. Okay, that's fine. We will move on to this side now, so a bit more Revlon Candid. Just a wee smidge. And to be honest, if I'm doing like a glamorous look, I would still very much do something similar to that. But maybe not quite as intense. So I might do my kind of more smoky halo spotlight that isn't so structured. I feel like that would be very what I do now. So I'll probably just grab the same shades. Like we'll use very much the same things, but just maybe how I do it now. Obviously, that's the point of this video. So I'll take Reckless. Fallout on this side would be way worse because I'm really not set on this side. I just don't tend to take things as high above the crease. Like this is so pronounced and so in your face. Whereas on this side, I just prefer to kind of work with my actual eye shape a bit more. I feel like it's a little bit more flattering for me, but I would definitely drag this side out more, which is what I'll do. And this is really going to help to lift up my eye as well and just give me a much more lifted appearance. So I tend to like where I've got my crease lift up from there. I've been doing this a lot with like black and grey and it just looks so cool. I need to do another like black and grey look soon because I do wear them a lot. My battery's about to die, I'm not surprised. This is taking a while to film. This is probably going to be quite a long Sunday morning video, isn't it? I do apologise. Just put me on one and a half times speed. Just, you know, pulls my eye up. And a bit of black because I still do pretty much always use black to add depth. This is why I always like having black in like all my palettes because then I don't have to jump around. But I'm not gonna take that well above the crease. Although I will drag it out a smidge. Which side are you currently preferring? You have to tell me. And be honest. Be entirely honest. You will not hurt my feelings. And then, just before my battery dies, I'll put that pigment on my lid. Hopefully before my battery dies. But first of all, I'll take a little bit of the shade Pink Me, which is actually quite a crappy shade in this palette, but whatever. This is a wee bit of a base. Help blend the edges and then I'll use my glitter glue and more of my pigment. Why did I put the lid back on it? This is not going to go above the crease. Holy macaroni, these colours together are so beautiful. Like, wow, I really need to change my battery. It's just going to cut out when I'm talking. So give me one second. I'll use a black eyeliner on both sides, like a waterliner, because I'd still do that now. Did it back then. Why not? This is actually Milani Slate Grey, because my black one's, like, finished, so. But it's very dark. It looks black. This will look, I think, it like, looks so much better when my lashes are on, you know? So let's put lashes on. Oh, I've got so many options. Wow. So on this side, I'm going to do a Coco Goddess Lash. Because they're amazing. And I'll use my Velour Lash Glue on the band. I just feel like how I do it now kind of lifts my eye up a bit more, but... 
You decide. You decide. Perfect, nothing wrong with that. A little bit harder to apply because I've not done it on my eye, but you know what I mean? It looked fine. Nice lash that actually. I really I forget how much I love Coco Lashes goddess style. And then on the other side, I don't know if I should use like the same lash and just apply it differently. Maybe that's what I should do. That's what I'll do. So I'm gonna draw my lash glue on my eyelid. This to me is just the fastest and easiest way of putting on a lash. It is the best way, trust me. And all I do slightly differently is that I raise the outer corner on this side so it's not quite touching my lash line. But I put the inner corner in as much as possible. And to me it just gives the appearance of a more upward sweeping eye by lifting up the outer corner a bit and when I put mascara on it will merge my lashes with the falsie but yeah putting lash glue along your lash line is just I find it's the easiest way I know a lot of people have like tried it and they don't love it so much but for me it's just so quick and easy like I can put a lash on in a minute like a pair of lashes on I'm going to just do my under eyes quickly off camera because I feel like this video is super long and I'm just gonna run the same colors underneath and then we'll come back and we'll do a lip and I don't think I really changed how I do my lips too much but we'll see I feel like I used to do a bold lip more often with a bold eye back in the day so I'm gonna use my Too Faced It's Happening which I adore by the way still do I just mostly wear a bold lip now with no eye makeup on pretty much. Also, I've just kept this under eye a little bit slimmer. This one's a bit more bold, you know? So I'm just gonna do a pink side. Just in the way I always would. I still do always have overdrawn my lips. I'll clean that up in a second because I've really, I can't apply liquid lipstick in a neat way like I just can't. I definitely do a nude lip more often now and I certainly would with this style of eye makeup. So I'm going to use Dose of Colour Sand which is an absolute favourite. Um, it just like matches my skin tone. I love it. And I'll use a nude lip liner. We'll use MUA Sincere. It matches it pretty well. And then I'll take a tiny bit of concealer to clean up my lines. I do tend to round my lips more than I used to. And a tiny bit of Maybelline 710 to lighten up. I think that nude side actually does look fuller because of the rounder shape which is something I learned from a snitchery video. I did a whole video on how to make you look like you've got lip fillers. I mean I love this pink side, it's just I wouldn't really wear it with this eye makeup these days. So we'll finish with more setting spray. As always, always gotta use the setting spray. On this side I'm gonna use my beloved All Nighter Ultra Glow. I swear by this. I really do. And then on the other side, I'll just go back in with more of my L'Oreal. I can't fan it away. That is like pretty much us. I need to go show you it in natural light as well. Let me bring you in. So, this is how I used to do it. And this is how I do my makeup these days. Oh, almost just dropped my palette.
ignore my hair for a second but I just feel like this side has so much more dimension than this side this side clearly offers 1000% more coverage but this side just looks better in my opinion um, I also much prefer this eye shape that I do now I just feel like it makes my eyes look longer and wider and more drawn up than this side um, a rounded lip makes my lip look bigger um, I'd say honestly on both sides my pores don't look fantastic but I don't really care like I said earlier like everyone has pores but I just I feel so confident like this and I feel confident like this too I just feel like this is a better representation of me these days you know what I mean um let me take you through to my living room and see if I can join in natural light it's actually like quite late on it's what time it's half past four and I feel like the light is really failing us now um, but I'll take you through and just show you like in more natural light because obviously I've got my studio lights on and they make everything look great but I'll come closer so you can see my forehead the brows the eyes look that's just like Neapolitan ice cream white highlight pink blush brown whereas over here it just all meshes in and looks so seamless okay I'm just sitting in front of my living room window I've got the overhead light on it's not that bright outside um just so you can see it a little bit better in more natural light than my studio lights i hope the light is okay i mean it's really hard to tell until i go to edit i mean i'm very dewy on both sides but i feel like this side just looks more natural naturally dewy i don't know what do you think i love full coverage I think it's the lip that's throwing me off. I should have put a nude on both sides and then I'd feel, I don't know, it would look a bit better, but yeah, that's as a natural lighting. So there we have it then. That is how I used to do my makeup versus how I do it now. I, like I've said a million times, prefer this side. You can let me know what you think. Don't really know what the point of this video was, except I bloomin' love cream products and building up from that base of creamy dewiness. It just makes me so happy and also, very happy to report, where did I put it? That um, Makeup Revolution serum looks so stunning underneath my like regular foundation. I can't wait to keep using that because I feel like it just gives me so much luminosity and loveliness. Whereas on this side, it's just really the Ofra that's giving me the highlight and a little bit of the setting spray. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. I do apologize if this is a horrifically long video. So if you've made it this far, leave me a bee emoji for my pink honey soap brow. So thank you so much for watching and I really hope I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.